right, folks, welcome to the channel. I'm Don. This is Rockin' a Country. I've got a gift request today, and it looks to be slightly different, like unique. And um, it was uh, a request by Jamie Snyder. So, Jamie, thank you for this, my friend. I think that's how, uh, you know, you'd say your name. But we've got Tom Shepard, New York to Montana. And here's what Jamie said in the request. As we are coming up on the anniversary of 9-11, there's a song I'd like you to react to and rate. It's by one of my favorite songwriters, Tom Shepard, Riding with Private Malone, Redneck Yacht Club, right? So he's got songs that people know. He's also got a sequel to Private Malone called Last Letter Home, but that's not the one I'd like you to react to now. In the following link, he actually breaks down how he wrote it. It's called New York to Montana. The book is based on the oh, the book based on the song is pretty good too. So there we go. And in honor of 9-11, it's going up ahead of 9-11, obviously, but I got my FDNY hat on. I'm in Jersey, so we were real close to the events, put it that way. All right, here we go. Today I'm gonna do my song New York to Montana. And when the song's over, stick around and I'll tell you how we wrote it. We're the songwriters. Willie woke up that morning with a price on his head. And them Lincoln Continental New Jersey boys, yeah, they wanted to see him dead. And on the Queensboro Bridge, running late for work, running scared and low on hope. When the second plane hit the building, that's when he became a ghost. And he drove, and he drove, and he drove from New York to Montana, slipping through the cracks. New York to Montana, running hard and never looking back. Billy made it through Chicago and he got back on the road the first day light of the 12th. Crossing Minnesota on into North Dakota till he found his way to Kalispell. She put his picture and a flower in the chain link surrounding that smoldering holy place in the ground. Way huh. too young to be a widow of a little did she know that the better place he was now. Yeah. Was flying on wings that he'd found from New York to Montana. Disappeared without a choice. New York to Montana. Dying just to hear her voice. But how could he imagine that he'd make a hand ranching and be riding the fence line at dawn? In no time, that number crunchy paper pushing white collar city boy was all but gone. He'd had enough of waiting and she fainted when she finally heard his voice on the phone. If they could make it through the winter, they'd finally be together and they'd start a new life on their own. Uh, where are we going? But back in Jersey, somehow they learned he might not be one of the missing. They started telling Jody cause he knew it was true. Soon she'd be leaving to be with him. In her rear view mirror, all uh -oh. she could see was that sun painted shrinking skyline. Whispound, hammer down, no stopping now with the feeling in the back of her mind that they might not be far behind. Still, she drove on through the night from New York to Montana. White knuckle hands on the wheel. New York to Montana. Hands of hell and nipping at her heels. Oh. Following this, 
is a lot easier in ways than a John Ritter song. Because John Ritter just comes at you like Eminem does in Rap God. It's like, like that. Like you can't, I, you know, trying to follow a sequence. I can get clear. The diction is perfectly clear, but I can't tell. I, I don't know what it's about yet. So we're, I, I'm guessing that how he wrote the song is going to help fill in a lot of the gaps. Unless there's more to the, a lot more to the song in which the backstory or front story is filled in the narrative. I can't tell if this is a dead person, like of the ghost of a person who died. And the connection to Jersey. She was closer if they didn't catch up with her first. When she spotted that link in her heart, started sinking. Things were about to take a turn for the worse. Jesus, what? Now that winter it was hard, but in the time they'd spent apart, he'd gotten dead eye good with a gun. Wow. When this Goombas caught her at the front gate. He picked them off one by one. Three shots rang out and it was done. After all those miles that they'd come from New York to Montana, she ran straight into his loving arms. New York to Montana, and today they're still where they are. Two kids and a cattle farm Three shallow graves by the barn Yeah. Now that's All right, I got to make my guess here. I mean, is this about the forgotten stories that happened around 9-11? Not intimately connected with 9-11. But there was, you know, you get overshadowed in the news when an event like this happens. Nobody cares about some other small issue somewhere or small on a national global scale. Like kid gets kidnapped. That's all. That just gets overshadowed by an event like 9-11. Is that what this is about? Just now we're going to find out. But I had to make my guess. Song is on our Tom and Coley shotgun CD. And uh, the way that song came about was I had the idea for a long time, like right after 9-11 happened, I remember thinking, what if somebody that worked in the Twin Towers had a reason to disappear? Like maybe their life was in danger or like the guy in the song uh, needed to skedaddle. <laughs> so I had that idea for a long time, but I, I didn't know where to go with it. Didn't, all I had was the idea of the guy having to escape from New York. So years later, I want to say 2013 or 14 maybe, I met this guy named Zach Nytomt. And uh, we were on a trip down to uh, the King Ranch in South Texas near Harlingen. And we were doing an event for this group called Trinity Oaks. And what Trinity Oaks does is they take veterans and they also take uh, uh, terminally ill children, people who have cancer, things like that. They take them on these dream hunting trips uh, on the King Ranch. And they get to go out and hunt these big animals called nil guys, which are like seven or eight hundred pounds. They're like a big deer, but imagine they have like devil horns kind of straight up. They're not like antlers. They're just black. And uh, so they get to take uh, these folks on these trips. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have songwriters come down and we are the campfire entertainment for the trip. But we also get to go on the hunts with them and uh, we also get to, you know, shoot um, skeet and uh, go fishing and it's just really a cool cool thing that Trinity Oaks does uh, for the veterans and uh, if you'd like to donate to them their website is trinityoaks.org yeah, that's cool. so uh, some great folks involved with that organization but it was on one of those trips down there to the King Ranch that I met this young songwriter named Zach Nightomped and when I met him I said what's your last name and he said Nightomped I said, that's, that's an unusual last name. How do you spell that? And he said, well, it's like New York to Montana, N-Y-T-O-M-T. 
as soon as he said that, it was like the idea unlocked in my brain. And I yeah. said, man, I have this song. This is going to sound crazy, but I have this song. I've had this idea for probably 12 or 13 years. And I never knew what to call it until now. Yeah. So now that I know you and your last name, maybe we should write this thing together. So we ended up going our separate ways. And I believe we, you know, maybe called each other. We were living in Austin at the time. And Zach was living up in Argyle, Texas, near Dallas. And so we'd only see him once in a while. So it took a couple of years of, you know, getting back together and calling him. Hey, man, we got to finish that song. Yeah. Come on, we got to finish it. You know how I say a lot on the channel, like I try to figure out the, where the germ of an idea came from and whether or not this is the type of song that you could have written on the bus 20 minutes after something happened or, or at home, 20, you know, in real quick, or if it was something that was fleshed out and how the verbiage came in together and how you change one word, then you got to change a few others. And then that makes you change a whole other line. And then the beginning line changes. And then you're like, oh, all this sort of stuff that goes on when you're working with words. This is exactly. But songs, they come back. Like, wasn't it Vince Gill? Uh, it was like decades later that he finished, like, was it his father's song? Like, it's it, it's hard, it's tough to kiss the lips to chew your ass out. It's tough to kiss the lips at night to chew your ass out all day long or something like that. And it just doesn't happen that you sit down and you write a song. Sometimes it does. It's rare, though. I mean, usually you're, you're muddling with it. This kind of idea, it's always brewing in the back of his head, and he meets a dude named Night Tompt. There's my song. That it fit the pieces together, and we have this. So finally, we got it all done, and it turned out so great, and ended up uh, recording it, like I said, uh, in Nashville. Robert Wright produced the record, and it's incredible. He put French horns on it, like a big Western soundtrack. It's, it's incredible what he did with that song. But... Um, so, right around the time that we recorded it, I had a gig uh, with my wife, Coley, and we were in Boise performing at this place. And, um, and I think we weren't even doing the song live at that point, but I met this guy after the show named Dan Sullivan. And I knew Dan, I'd met him before, and uh, he's an author. He's written some books based on the songs of an artist named Jim Morris. He's written three of those books. And um, he introduced me to his friend, and he said, this is my buddy. He's over here from uh, Montana. And I said, oh, I just wrote a song about Montana. And he said, really, what's it about? And I told him the story, and he said, that sounds like my next novel. So I was like, really? He said, yeah, send me the, send me the lyrics and send me the recording of the song, and I'll just <laughs> see what I can come up with. So uh, just a few short weeks later, he sent me like the first 10 pages of the book and uh, I loved it. I was blown away. I thought it was exactly what I wanted. So um, he kept sending me pages and and we would kind of give him our feedback. You know, I'd send it to Zach and he would kind of throw his feedback in there. And uh, I think it was in like 71 days, Dan wrote an entire novel based on that song. Mm -hmm. And uh, it came out in January of 2019 I believe it was and uh, so now it's a novel New York to Montana you can get it on Amazon I'm gonna put links in the uh, in the comments below so you can find out where to get that you can also get it on audible.com which is great if you're one of those people that likes to drive and listen to books I do that quite a bit or on airplanes that's a lot of fun but it's really exciting to see uh, a song go from just a song to being a novel to who knows. I, I feel like one day it's going to be a movie. Movie. Um, I just have that feeling because I think it's a it's a great story. So uh, thanks to Dan Sullivan for writing the novel. Thanks to Zach Nytompt for your last name <laughs> for writing the song yeah. with me. And uh, I hope you all like the song. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And uh, you'll get notifications of when I have a new video out. There's lots of stuff on here about songwriting and music in general. So, anyway, thank you all for listening. I'm Tom Shepard. That, uh, yeah, that's, good. that's just fun, good stuff. I mean, he said what he had to say on the Tom did on that. And I love that the creative process because, you know, when you listen to a three or four minute song, you just think it's linear. You, you hear it, maybe you hear it, maybe you like the song, you hear it 10, 20 times, 
and you know what the order is of words, of the melody, the chorus, the, the bridge, all, you just know it, right? And so to you, that's the only sequence that could have worked because that's what's playing in your mind's ear or in your stereo system. And but that's not how songs are written. <laughs> you go, you take the middle and you might move that to the front if you want to have mystery in it. Like you, you know, you just you. Some songs are made to be suspenseful, just like movies are. And so when things get written, you know, things get moved around. And you know, in, in grammar and English and and uh, when you're writing, you learn about modifying clauses and subordinating clauses and what you do when you move. A subordinated clause to the front so that's leading things off and it changes the whole feel for the reader or the listener and and this is case in point I, I couldn't have made it better than what he just did he just actually demonstrated the whole songwriting process it came years later there's a chance meeting with this guy and then another one with that guy then it's a book and maybe it becomes a movie, and then the movie could turn back around and boost the song. And uh, so that's that's its own song in, in just a meta context. So, oh, you wanted me to rate this thing, Jamie. All right. Uh, I'm going to rate not just the song, because what I do is just like when I look at a video, and I'll see, all right, does the video itself work? What, was there thought put into a video, like uh, like a music video? Not this. This is just Tom talking, but which could be a name of a song. I'm just Tom talking. But when you see a video put together, does it work with the song? Does There's the artistry behind things and the thought that is put into things and the instrumentation and lyrics does that work with the visual and all that i'm gonna just react to my experience of the song and tom's explanation of it because when i spend 10 or in this case a lot longer because th the video itself was 11 or 12 minutes long um you know in this case 20 minutes on camera or so what i'll do is i will rate my experience of what that was and I'm coming in with a 9.2. I love learning stuff. I love when somebody else makes points that I've made before, but they actually live it, and that just makes the case, you know. And, um, of course, I, I don't like being wrong. I don't mind being wrong because, any t I mean, you have to be wrong on some things. If you're going to speak a lot, something's not going to be quite right. But I like to get things right. I like to be able to, like, connect most of the dots in life. And this did that. And Tom has a great speaking voice. The song itself was one of intrigue. I thought maybe this was like, you know, one of the masterminds of 9-11 who had escaped to Montana. Like, I had no idea. And then he's waiting in the wintertime from Chicago to there. And he wanted to see the girl. And then he shoots the three people and dead people. And it's like, man, this isn't tied to 9-11 directly. I'm not seeing the connection here. And it really wasn't. It was just the timing. And it might have been a convenient excuse, as he Tom explained, uh, not not an excuse, a um, a way to get out. Like you had this, you had to leave town for some reason, and this gave you the reason because people would just assume that you were vaporized in the attacks. But in this case, the dude wasn't, and uh, why he was going to Montana, a woman there, okie dokie, there you go. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. You can thank Jamie Snyder for that. And I'll put the link to Tom's channel down below. Have a great day. I'll see you on another video. I'll keep rocking the country.